that everyone deserves to be loved, heard, affirmed, and respected. We at Oak Lawn UMC believe that as a church, it is possible to offer this to one another. We listen, learn, appreciate diversity, and love God above all else and our neighbors as ourselves. Therefore, as individual parts of the church, we pledge to move towards this corporate reality so that the church can be a voice for the voices, a home for the wanted, a respite for the weary, a balm for the hurting, God's presence. Good morning. Well, that's the second week of our video. I wasn't able to edit in some of the videos that we got this week, but it's kind of a little rinky-dink video that I've put together on iMovie, and I have no film skills in my repertoire. Um, but we know someone who does, and that is Cheryl Allison. Wave your hand in the back. And today, she is actually going to bring her professional camera with her professional mic after worship to record folks saying the preamble. So we would love for you to be a part of that. It's after worship. I'm not sure. Did you decide where we were going to do it? No. <laughs> we'll let you know. Perfect. So we'll meet in the hospitality center. So uh, we would love for you to be a part of that. And she's going to like make it actually a beautiful video that's not just put together by iMovie and myself. So um, if you are new here to Oakland, we are so glad that you are here. Welcome. We um, are glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. We would love to get to know you and connect with you, and so you're welcome to um, text the word NEW to that number or um, fill out a little connect card that folks in the back or as you leave will pass out to you so that we can get to know you, have coffee, um, get to share our stories together. This week marks the beginning of our generosity campaign. Woohoo! It is called Community, Cultivating Generosity for an Uncommon Good. And this series, we're going to go th from today to October 31st and learn what does it mean? What does it look like for us to be in a community together and cultivate generosity for an uncommon good? What does that mean? We'll explore that. Next week, a part of our gen our community series is Celebration Sunday. So that is going to be a big party. We're going to have worship here inside like normal. And then we'll have an open house after worship to get to know what, are, what goes on during the week that's not on Sunday. And you'll get to explore all the hidden hallways of the church. So we'll have an open house. And then we'll also have a jazz band playing and burgers out in the lawn. And so it's going to be a party. It's going to be fun. Bring chairs, picnic blankets, um, and maybe some fans. We don't know. It might be hot, so bring that too. These are some ways you can get involved. I'm just going to highlight today we have the one board meeting that will meet at 2.30. The Zoom link is on our events page. And then um, we have a lot of opportunities to serve. And so these are some ways you can go to our website. And I'll just highlight that today is our blessing bag creation party. So that's also after worship in the fellowship hall. So if you leave and go all the way to the very back where you can't go anymore, that's where our blessing bag creation party will be. So get a preamble video and go help make some blessing bags. And with that, I think that's all of our announcements for today. So let's take a moment, take a breath, and let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
Good morning. Let me invite you to rise as you are able as we call one another to worship. In Christ, we strive for common good in uncommon ways, with uncommon joy in generosity, with uncommon hope for what is yet to come, with uncommon grace in our work, with uncommon courage as we persevere, with uncommon hunger to be reconciled, with uncommon grit to break down barriers. Let us give thanks for the good that is embodied in uncommon ways and work through our worship and action to make common what is far too uncommon. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 581, Lord Whose Love and Humble Service. You can find in the blue hymn, or the words will be on the screen. And we're singing verses 1, 2, and 4. with one another by offering the peace of Christ by saying peace, whatever is comfortable to your neighbor, just honor and respect their boundaries.
will join us down in the front for the children's time with Pastor Chuck. Come right on down here. Yes, I'm going to announce it. Good morning. How are you? Oh, you want us to move? Oh, how about over here? Here, guys, you want to come over here with me? Coming through? Coming through? Okay. No. Here, sit right over here. Come on, come on, come on. He wants us to see this screen. Still not. Oh. There we go. There he is. All right. All right. What a great group. How's everybody doing this morning? Doing well? Good. Good. All right. I have a question. Do you know what the word immigrant means? No? You know what an immigrant is? Sorry? No? No, not quite. An immigrant is a person who goes from one country to another country. Okay? From one country to another country. Sometimes they go to live and it, they live all the time in this new country. Some people don't like immigrants. Some people don't like immigrants. Do you know what's funny about that? We're all immigrants. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm sorry? You've traveled to Austin, okay? We've all traveled. And our families who came before us immigrated from another country to the United States. We're all immigrants. Okay? But some people don't like immigrants. Now, our passage of scripture this morning says, make sure no outsider who now follows God ever has occasion to say, God put me in second class. I don't really belong. Uh, this translation is using modern languages. Like if you go on, the, on an airplane, you're the first class or second class. Second class doesn't get as good of food. <laughs> they're more crowded so just because you're an immigrant doesn't mean you should people shouldn't love you now our church helps immigrants our church helps immigrants okay do you have the first you have the first slot now see i was i was thinking it would be right here and i could go point right to it no 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 okay all right see over See over the map up there? You see, there's a word up there that says Syria. Syria. That's the name of a country, Syria. Oh, okay, there we go. Get the cursor, Syria. And there's a war in Syria. So people had to flee. They had to run away from Syria. And they went to Lebanon. See, that's the green part. They're Lebanon. And our church helps them. Our church helps them if they flee from Syria into Lebanon. That makes them immigrants. And you see, we got a picture up there on the left. Who's that in the middle? <laughs> Thomas knows. <laughs> That's Reverend Rachel. That's right. Okay, so she goes to Lebanon to help immigrants. Because wherever we're born, wherever we travel to, we're God's children. God loves us, and we should love one another. Okay? Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you love us wherever we're from, wherever we're born, wherever we've traveled. We pray your blessings on those who have to run away from their home to get away from trouble of any kind. We thank you that this church helps people who have had to run away. We thank you for Safe Spaces Lebanon and for Reverend Rachel, who travels halfway around the world to help immigrants. 
We thank you that you love us all. In Jesus' name, amen. And those of you uh, doing confirmation will meet at noon today. So right after church, meet me up here, okay? Scripture today comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Um, we're reading it from the message translation this morning. God's message. Guard my common good. Do what's right and do it the right way. For salvation is just around the corner. My setting things right is about to go into action. How blessed are you who enter into these things. You folks who embrace them, who keep Sabbath and don't defile it, who watch your step and don't do anything evil. Make sure no outsider, no foreigner or immigrant who now follows God ever has occasion to say, God put me in second class. I don't really belong. And make sure no physically mutilated person is ever made to think, I'm damaged goods, I don't really belong. For God says, to the mutilated person who keeps my Sabbaths and chews what delights me and keeps a firm grip on my covenant, I'll provide them an honored place in my family and within my city, even more honored than that of my children. I'll confer on them permanent honors that will never be revoked. And as for the outsiders, the foreigners, and the immigrants who now follow me, working for me, loving my name, and wanting to be my servants, all who keep Sabbath and don't defile it, holding fast to my covenant, I'll bring them to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. They'll be welcome to worship the same as the insiders to bring burnt offerings and sacrifices to my altar. Oh yes, my house of worship will be known as a house of prayer for all people. The decree of the one who reigns, God himself, who gathers in the exiles of Israel, I will gather others also, gather them in with all those already gathered. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. I'm Pastor Rachel. If I haven't met you yet, welcome to Oak Lawn United Methodist Church. It's a joy and honor for us to be able to worship with you. I've been gone the last two weeks and I miss you. Um, I've been gone doing some, a variety of things, but um, some planned and some not planned. Uh, one I've let some of you know uh, turned out to be a little bit like Woodstock for pastors, and I will be going back. <laughs> More to come. Uh, and another to, um, to offer pastoral care to uh, Lexi and Lee. We're grateful for your presence here, and I want to um, name uh, now, we're, we're a week late into this, but the month of September is Suicide Awareness Month, and uh, we will have ways to um, be a part of that recognition that's happening um, uh, internationally as a way of honoring those that we love and have lost, and, um, and a way of supporting those who are here. I want to... Um, invite you to um, open your minds to be present for this new series. This is, this is a hefty one. Oftentimes when we do a series, it'll be maybe four weeks, something, you know, nicely packaged. But this one's eight weeks, so you got to hang in, and it's going to be good. So um, I hope that you will get ready and engage with us in this new series called Community. Um, as we prepare to... Um, 
to talk more deeply about this scripture that Scott has just so beautifully read for us, I want to invite you to a time of prayer. God of restoration, when pain and injustice, ours and others, cries out for attention, remind us of the sacred capacities we hold within. Through Christ, you revealed the power of your presence with us. May we not be content with only looking into the distance for answered prayers. Make us ever attuned to what we already have within us and around us, asking what you would have us do with the gifts that we bear today. God, open our minds and our hearts to receive your word and to be open to new meaning this day and every day. Amen. Community. Working for the common good. What is the common good? This passage is a call to love your neighbor and protect the common good. That's why we used the message today, and I encourage you to go back and read this 56th chapter of Isaiah in different, um, from different translations, because um, I, I think I gained something different from every translation, but I will say that we chose this one because we want to explore the common good. And today we're beginning this sermon series really focusing, especially today, on defining community and common good, the beloved community of God, and how it is that we're called to protect the common good through our generosity and through our hospitality. For eight weeks, we are going to take a deeper look in different ways at how we're called to come together as community and show love and protect that which we call the common good. As you just heard uh, earlier when Gretchen did our call to worship, um, oftentimes we do this in uncommon ways, unfortunately. We're conditioned, I think, to be individualistic and uh, protective of ourselves. I think we're conditioned uh, to be fearful of the other. Last night, my family watched the musical Come From Away. If you haven't seen it, I uh, recommend it. In one of the scenes, a man was overwhelmed by the generosity of a town full of strangers who showed up when he was stranded to offer all kinds of things from shelter to food to phones. They even opened their home for him to sleep in. And he wondered, where am I going to put my wallet? <laughs> because we're conditioned to expect from the world a culture of individualism and greed rather than the structures of care and love and hospitality that God so clearly teaches in this scripture. And so embodying a call to be generous in these ways may easily feel uncommon to us. Walter Brueggemann, um, who I've quoted for you before, I think he's brilliant, um, says, nothing we finally desire as human beings can be had through individual autonomy. The neighbor is not a detraction or an inconvenience, but is the currency through which community with God is on offer. Each week in worship, we collect our gifts, our offerings together. And we collect them as a response to the presence of God in our lives. But here's the thing. We do not need to give in order to appease God. That's not why we give. 
No offering is necessary in order to know God's embrace. I hope you know that. To gather together what we have instead is an invitation. It's an invitation to live what we believe. That's why it's an act of worship. It's an invitation to practice what we proclaim and to take a risk on one another in faith that with each other, there will be enough. There will be enough. I want us to wrestle with what such love and protection will require in our culture today. Because any time we read the Holy Scripture, we have to do some level of translation, even if those before us have helped translate for us. <laughs> so what does it mean in our culture today? God calls us not to the strict adherence of rules or unquestioned obedience to tradition, but to act justly, to cherish kindness, and to be humble companions of love in all that we do. And in this series, we will explore what it means to be faithful to God in the practice of our religion, not losing sight of the purpose of our worship or the foundations of our faith. In all aspects of our lives, love should be at the center. Love experienced through our relationship with God. Our text for today is one that I believe stands apart. It stands out among the most important texts to guide our work, and it comes from the third part of Isaiah. The prophet speaks to a question that seems to confound and confuse cultures to this day. What do we do with those who are not like us? What do we do with those who are not like us? Hatred, bigotry, xenophobia, transphobia, all the phobias, they're a cancer on our society. These fears are deadly. We have seen hatred lead some to attack, lead some to kill others because of their skin color or because of their ideological differences or because of their sexuality. I think about posters I've carried, banners I've waved over the last year. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Immigrants are welcome here. Refugees are welcome. And I read this text, and I'm fairly certain <laughs> that if the prophet delivered this message today, they would be waving these signs. In a post-exile Israel, where survival was the focus, where foreigners were feared and excluded from the community, where those who were different from the majority who set the rules for expected behaviors. A prophet was needed to call some of the exclusionary beliefs and practices into serious question. And the author of Isaiah 56 was just that prophet. I believe we need to hear this prophetic message today. And we ourselves need to speak up and speak out when our country is drowning in its own racism. We need to be reminded of this prophetic word so that we can do the far too uncommon work of mustering the truthful energy and moral clarity 
to call out hate and violence and racism and xenophobia. And the list goes on and on. Our text says, guard justice and perform righteousness. Otherwise said, guard my common good and do what is right. Salvation is around the corner and we're about to set things right. You hear the urgency in this? The prophet begins by announcing that the actions of God's followers should mirror the past, present, and future actions of God. Actions that are always characterized by justice and righteousness. Happy or blessed is the one who does this and the one who grabs hold of it, who keeps the Sabbath, who has relationship with God. So far, the prophetic words are standard, right? Do justice, not evil. But the closer definition of what these common commands now mean are ones that we particularly need to hear in our time. Make sure no outsider who now follows God ever has occasion to say, God put me in second class. I don't belong here. And make sure that no physically mutilated person is ever made to think, I'm damaged goods. I don't belong here. Despite what is said in Deuteronomy, the prophet speaks a new word. Right? I mean, the reason this is being said is to upend what has already been said, to upend what has already been practiced. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast to my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. Can you imagine getting a name better than son or daughter? I will give them an everlasting name that shall not ever be cut off. Yes, along with these, the foreigners, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people all people the move here is radical this change in scripture is radical while there are many places in scripture that reinterpret and reactualize tradition this one is using an old word to say something surprisingly new to a new generation It's a living word. Welcoming all faithful people to the temple, which will become a house of prayer for all peoples. Friends, we are in desperate need of such language in our day. We need to be reminded that God is not in the business of providing commandments to us that can never be altered or changed. Our church history has used the Bible as a means to oppress by practicing the holding of slaves, by treating women as second-class citizens, by rejecting LGBTQ persons. As we look at what makes up community. We must do so with Isaiah present to remind us of past errors, but also with a revelation of God that is ongoing, always subject to new insight and always moving toward loving inclusion. 
May the voice of Isaiah be in our minds and our hearts, speaking to any bigotry or hatred that resides within us and opening us to new truths, new responsibilities. God has work for us to do. If this understanding of community is not yet common, then we must work to make it so. God has work for us to do. Because I'm here to tell you, this work is uncommon. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you open your loving embrace to us all. We desire a relationship with you. So whatever barriers stand in the way of that on any given day, God, we ask that you help us to remove them. Help us to open our hearts so that we can go out into the world and share your love with others. And through the work of our generosity and hospitality, bring them into relationship with you as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, as we prepare to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, I offer this reminder that just as our text has said, this table is open to all. This feast is for you. The table has been set, and all are welcome here. right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you almighty God creator of heaven and earth you formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed your love remained steadfast you delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against each other, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, your Spirit, anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He broke it. He gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has On us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. You're invited to partake of the sacrament that is with you in your pew. If you don't have it, just raise a hand and we'll make sure you get it.
Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go forth in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Won't you pray with me? Creator God, you invite us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers that are dear to us, that are as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. 20 years later, God, we remember the victims of the 9-11 attacks and their loved ones. The images and stories are just as impactful and relevant as they were then. So are our thoughts and prayers. We pray for those who are healing from other sickness and ailments for continued improvement and strength. We pray for those who are displaced by recent storms for the people of Afghanistan, for conflicts in our own nation and throughout the world. We lift the unique prayers we have in our heart. Hear these prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbors. God, help us to be in community. Help us to find gratitude where we need it. Help us to find hope where others need us to have it. Help us to live with faith and exude the joy that comes from loving each other unconditionally. Teach us as disciples of Christ, so to love the world that you, that your name may be known throughout all the earth. Amen. Our church stands as a beacon of hope for so many here at the corner of Oak Lawn and Cedar Springs, welcoming, loving, and showing incredible hospitality. Being part of a community like this is important for all of us. And your support in any way that you can is important to the community as well. I invite you today to discern how you can help with your gifts and your offerings to make sure this community continues to flourish. You're invited to give online or as you exit with the ushers who will have offering plates. Let us pray. God, encourage and assist us in our lives of generosity. Help us to live our lives according to your standards of graciousness and generous love. Empower these gifts. Guide, by, by, guide them by grace and the power of Jesus' love. Strengthen us for all that lies ahead in the days to come. Amen.
Our closing hymn today is hymn number 428, For the Healing of the Nations. You're invited to stand as you're able. As we sing this closing hymn, we'll sing all the verses. couple reminders that we have blessing bag building party in the fellowship hall confirmation um, right here in the hospitality center and hospitality center for preamble recording so look for cheryl in the hospitality center if you'd like to be a part of that and as we go from this place i want to um, invite you to be reminded that god indeed has work for us to do God has work for us to do, so let us go from here committed to worshiping God through all facets of our lives, serving one another, turning from power's seduction, embracing creative paths of healing and restoration, and in faithfulness to Christ who leads us, may we go in peace to love and serve our neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.